Hello, um, in this video we'll cover uh, motors and generators. Uh, what we're gonna talk here is about efficiency, computing the efficiency of a motor and a generator. So let's talk about motors first. In a motor we have the input power to be purely electrical. Two types of power, uh, one, that, one that we'll call PA, that's the electrical power that, he, that is applied to the armature windings. The armature windings that are the coils in the rotor of the motor. And we also apply electrical power to the fuel windings, and we're going to call that power PF. The fuel windings are the coils in the stator. So we have the armature windings, they are located in the rotor of the motor, that's the the part that is rotating and the field windings they are located in the stator the part that is static so we apply electrical power to both windings to the armature windings and to the field windings and that's the total input power now as we know the output of a motor is the mechanical power so the power we get at the output it's just mechanical power And with that power, we can move uh, a mechanical load. So now we can we can compute an efficiency, and that efficiency is going to be given by the ratio of the output divided by the input. Uh, the input is is not equal to the output because we have losses. We lose energy, uh, so we can compute the losses if we subtract the input minus the output. There are in general three types of losses. Uh, electrical losses in the armature windings. Um, what we have there is a, the, uh, the, uh, there's some power being dissipated by the wire in the armature windings. So that's energy that is being lost. We also have power being dissipated in the field windings you know where I call that LF and that is also power that is being lost and finally we have uh, mechanical and magnetic losses uh, for example friction and that type of losses so that, that's also energy that is being lost and uh, the total losses PL can be computed as the summation of what we're losing in the armature windings what we are losing in the field windings and the mechanical losses. Now, things are similar for generators, but uh, in a generator what we have is now the, the output is purely electrical. We get electrical power at the output. And at the input, we have mechanical power. We need mechanical power to, to rotate the rotor of the generator, so we need to apply mechanical power, and we also need to apply electrical power to the field windings in order to create uh, a magnetic field inside the motor, or inside the generator in this case. So the total input power is going to be the electrical power we apply to the field windings and the mechanical power. And what we get at the output is electrical power. That's the, the electric power that is being generated. What we have here is electrical power. At the output in we get this from the armature winding. Okay. We can also find the efficiency of the generator as the ratio again between the output and the input. And we also will have the same type of losses as I mentioned with uh, motors, so you can compute the losses just subtracting the input minus the output and we're gonna have uh, losses in the armature windings, losses in the field windings and mechanical and losses. Okay, now let's talk about models for motors uh, and we're gonna talk about two types of, of motors. The first one is the series motor and 
what we're going to have in general here is just that we're going to apply power to the field windings and we're going to represent the field windings with a resistor and that resistor represents the total electrical resistance of the wire in the armature in the field windings and we're going to connect the armature windings in series with the field windings and I have RA that represents the total resistance in the, in the field windings and they are connected in series with the field winding and here we have the total voltage in the armature winding and EB is the back EMF so if we have the model it's very easy to compute the losses the losses in the armature windings as we said before we have losses in the armature winding in this case those losses are electrical losses are going to be given by uh, the current square times R A, and the losses in the field windings are going to be computed as the, the current flowing through the field windings square times R F square. In the case of a series motor, uh, the same current flowing through the field windings is the same current flowing through the armature windings because they are connected in series. That's why it's called series motor. So we have IA is going to be equal to IF. And this, this is only true for, for this type of motor. Now, if we connect the armature windings uh, differently, uh, we can get a motor that is called a shunt motor, and we're going to see how that is. So we have the, the input power VF, it's the source that we apply to the field windings so we have the field windings represented with a resistor I RF and then we have the current flowing through the field windings and we're going to connect in parallel the armature windings so we have here the back EMF EB and the resistance RA that represents the total resistance of the wire in the armature winding so now we're going to have IA flowing there and here we have the voltage VA. So IF and IA they need not be the same. In the series motor they were the same because they were they were connected in, in series, but in a shunt motor they could be different. Because IF and IA are, are current currents flowing in different branches. But what we have in a shunt motor is that the source is connected in parallel with everything, so with the field windings in the shunt and the, the field windings in the armature winding, so VA is the same as VF. And we can compute the losses the same as before by taking the current square times the corresponding resistance. For we can compute the input power for both of these models. And what we do is we have VF here, we have VF there. So the input power is going to be the power applied to the field windings plus the power applied to the armature windings. And this is going to be just electrical power, IF times VF for the field windings plus IA times VA for the armature windings. And we, we use this formula for both. Then here we have the losses, if we know the mechanical losses, uh, and the input we can find efficiency. So let's see an example using the series motor. Let's say we have a series motor like that and we have an input of 440 volts. The resistance of the field windings is 0.25 ohms. The resistance of the armature windings is 0.4 ohms. And we know the current flowing through the field windings. IF there is 60 amps and we're interested here in finding the efficiency of the motor. If we know that mechanical losses are approximately uh, 10 watt, so what's the efficiency of the motor? In order to find the efficiency we need the input and we need the output, so we're going to start, for, uh, we're going to start by finding um, the losses, the total losses so we have three types of losses. Losses in the armature windings, <coughs> losses in the field windings, and the mechanical losses. 
Now in this this example, we're given the, the mechanical losses 10 watts there. So we just need to find LA and LF. And we find those using the resistances and the current. Just like that for the armature windings and the same thing for the field winding. So in this case, since we have a series motor, uh, both currents are the same. Same current flowing through the field windings is the same current flowing through the armature windings. And in this case, it's just 60 amps. So LA is going to be 60 square times the resistance RA. And then we have the, the losses LA. And then for the field winding, we have the same current times RF. The current squared times RF. And those are the total electrical losses. So now we can find the total losses by adding the three terms and we get 2.35 kilowatts. That's the total losses. Now we can compute the input power. The input power, and here we're dealing with a motor, is going to be the total electric power applied to the field windings plus the total power applied to the armature windings. And we find this by multiplying IF times VF plus IA times VA. So IF is 60, VF is 440, IA is 60 as well because if this is a serious motor and VA, well we don't know VA but we can find it. VA is the voltage here between these two points and we can we can apply here KVL to find VA. <coughs> So we have KVL for this. Uh, we have VF minus the drop across RF, VRF. That has to be equal to VA. Right, so what we have is the voltage VA is between these two points, and that is equal to VF minus the drop across RF. Just like that. So VF is 440 minus the drop across RF is just current times resistance and we get 425 volts. That's the value of the voltage in the armature windings. That's the value we use here for the total power. So when we find this input is 51.9 kilowatt. That's the total input, and here we have the total losses, so we can find the output. If we take the, if we subtract the losses from the input, then we get the output. So the output is going to be PI minus PL, and this is 51.9 minus 2.35. 49.55 kilowatts. Now we can easily compute the efficiency by taking the ratio between output and input. Efficiency is going to be output divided by input and that is 49.55 kilowatts divided by 51.9 kilowatt and in this case we get 0.95. That's the efficiency of the motor. So we have a 5% of our of the input energy is being lost. Now if we want to find the back EMF, we can easily do that. This back EMF EP is nothing but VA. VA is the voltage between these two points. If we subtract the drop across RA, we get EB. So VA minus the drop across RA is equal to EB and VA is 425 and the drop across RA is the current times resistance and in this case we get 401 volt so if we're interested in finding EB we can do it we can do it this way and that's the value of the 
uh, back EMF. 